hello students and viewers well today we are on uh, our novels chapter number 26 of the ice candy man by Bax Sidwa. and as we are reaching close to the text of this novel we shall be today therefore only discussing the case of lost and found aya shanta the aya of lani baby who was in some middle of the book abducted by the writers or by the people who were muslims and they had abducted her because she was hindu these things have caused her abduction and after that she disappeared there was no news about her but chapter 26 starts with one sentence which says cousin scoop drops hints he tells cousin he suspects where i is yes he thinks he is in lahore so that is the sentence which reminds us about the whole story of Aya, how she was abducted, and how Lenny thought herself responsible for revealing the information about her presence inside the house, and then she was carried away by the people. And after that, she disappeared, and a lot of chapters have gone, and now once again, we have the uh, <clears throat> hint being given by the writer that the cook of cousin, who lives very close to the house of Lenny Baby, has given some information to her uh, and so now the hint is being repeated that Aya has not gone to Amritsar, she has not gone to India and she's, she is inside Pakistan and she is in Lahore as well. So this goes to kickstart the whole issue that where then Aya should be and who is taking care of Aya and why is she not coming back to the house of these Parsis? What is the reason behind that? All these things will be talked about by us <coughs> in uh, uh, in this section of the book, which begins with chapter 26. Let's take this into our mind and go down the chapters, different statements of the chapters, and finding out how Aya is present in Lahore, how she's discovered, and what are the other characters doing at the main time. Like this passage is, uh, it says, it surprises me how easily Rana has accepted his loss and adjusted to his new environment. So one gets used to anything if one must. The small bitterness and grudges I tend to nurse make me feel ashamed of myself. Rana's ready ability to forgive. If past, none of us could control, keep him whole. This chapter, uh, this paragraph is again a very beautiful paragraph about uh, that boy Rana whom uh, Lenny Baby had met in Pirpindu. And now after partition, he has suffered a lot and once again is present in Lahore. When Lenny looks at him, she finds that Rana has forgotten everything and she is able to, he is able to adjust himself in the social setup of Lahore and is no more remembering the people or the problem which had happened with him. So in this way, the hint is being given that it's possibility with the human being that they can forget their bitternesses and they can come up with a new situation. They can pass through anything and after that, they may be able to adjust in the new situation. Perhaps Lenny is trying to give the hint that same would be the case with Aya, as is the case with Hamida also, as is the case of with many of the other people who have suffered the partition wounds, but normally they are returning to their normal life and they are forgetting the bitterness of the past and assuming them to be the happy people and going on with that. So from this paragraph, we are going to gain the hint whether it is possible for Aya also to forget these things and to come to the normal life once again. However, we should keep in mind that coming to the normal life is most of the time not easy. Most of the time, it's a difficult kind of thing. So that is why it may be easy for Rana, but it will be very difficult for that girl, Aya. <clears throat> Let's see what further writer has in the store to let us know. And here is another green paragraph which says, the mystery of the women in the courtyard deepens at my night. We hear them wailing, their cries verging on the inhuman. Sometimes they can't tell where the cries are coming from from the women or from the house next door, infiltrated by our invisible neighbors. <clears throat> uh, this cry thing is being talked about by Lenny, uh, uh, about the house which is situated quite uh, uh, next to their, their house. And uh, that's a type of rehabilitation center. That's a type of storehouse. That's a type of place where the lost and found women are put there. So the case of lost and found women is not only about Aya, it is about many other women as well who have been discovered from abductions, who have been discovered from the cruel hands of people who have been lost and now they are discovered. And after that, when they are put into this place, their cries are all the time coming up from the day and night. And this, these cries go to suggest that everything has not been easy 
losses have been great and that is why wailing and crying goes on perhaps this is the hint being given to make us understand that aya might also be having the similar type of wailing and crying same as the case with this passage for example it says and closer and as upsetting the cage voices of our parents fighting in their bedroom mother crying wailing father stirs harsh indecipherable sentences terrifying thumps i know the quarrel mostly about money but there are other things they fight about that are not clear to me sometimes i hear mother say no jana i won't let you go i won't let you go to her sounds of scuffle father goes anyway where does he go in the middle of the night to home why when mother loves him so although father has never raised his hands on us one day to surprise mother at her bath and see the bruises on her body so this paragraph uh, is again related to the women as in the past passages we have found out that women were crying and wailing and definitely they were under the sufferings of the losses and the troubles they have gone into same is the case with the women who are in the in the houses as for example lenny's mom she is fighting and quarreling and her husband is also fighting and quarreling with her and some kind of fight and quarrel or the struggle or the conflict is going on between them as well and ultimately it is revealed to lenny baby that there were bruises on her body it means that she Uh, had been receiving bruises from her husband so that was the lot of the women most of the time if the partition takes place the women suffer if the troubles are there women suffer if the matter of honor is there women suffer if the matter of protection of somebody else women suffer and in that way suffering is all the time in the lot of women and as a result the ground is being prepared let us be ready that how much aya would be suffering because of the whole situation let's go deep into the chapter and see one more thing She places a six inches iron nail blessed by the Parsi mystic Mohammed Ibira, the disciple of the Stur Kukaduru, under my mattress to ward off fear. This is a very small passage, but just the writer was intended to remind us that something is very, uh, you know, abnormal going on uh, in 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 the in the house of uh, Lenny, and as a result, they wanted to protect and they wanted to see whether the people are. Uh, protected by the religious uh, you know guards and goddesses whether they can protect they can keep protecting and for this purpose any incantations or any type of uh, rites can be done any ceremonies can be done the same one of the ceremony has been pointed out with reference to the highest possible personalities of the parsi religion so one is reminded constantly by sidwa that the writer is a parsi and parsi culture has to go side by side even if uh, the story of partition and story of pakistani new born pakistani state is here the story of many people but this is the story of the parsi culture as well that is why it is reminded to us again and again now uh, here is a very small uh, sentence that i have uh, well colored it to it says poor fate smitten women fate smitten kis kismat ki mari in urdu as we would call it as hamida is telling to the to then baby that all the time women are the people who are fate smitten they accept their fate and they go on with the life whatever has been given to them they cannot stop at all and uh, if something bad has happened to them they would say that they are poor smitten women they don't uh, they don't complain to god they they simply uh, blame their fate and that is what is going on with the women most of the time in asia and south asia and in many parts of the world as well hamida uh, tells uh, some of the uh, stories as of the hamida is also available uh, we may skip this story because we already have discussed hamida's character and we have been talking about with us on last chapter so it may be ignored and after that let's go down in order to see what further in these chapters can be possibly there here is a small passage again in the same chapter 26 i reflect a moment cousin certainly does not arouse in me the rapture masir arouse jinaya i recall the bewildering long- longings the look on masir's face stirred in me when he looked at aya and other stirrings so in that way reminder constantly comes to us about the appearance of certain lovers of aya and that was masir also that was i scanny man also it means that some type of lovers will be existing in future as well and aya's mesmerization with these lovers may be present here alongside we also have the mention of uh, her own appearance her own taking how does lenny feel about the lovers that he doesn't feel in that way as aya would feel so in this way we are being constantly reminded that aya did have the lovers and these lovers possibly created a star and where are these lovers at this moment when aya is suffering so heavily so in that way again and again reminder of different things have been done uh, it appears that uh, 
the writer is trying to close down the story but before closing the conclusive elements are being gathered by the writer in different chapters and different paragraphs let us see what happens in this paragraph i certainly feel shy and cousin looks mortally defeated i think my sudden shyness convinces him of my wayward heart more than any per protestations would in fact the writer wants us to uh, remember that this is the story being told by lenny and this is the story not only being told by lenny but also it is the story of the biography of the writer as well and that is why alongside the mention of all these suffering women we have the mention of lenny as well who is growing old becoming a young woman and at this moment what are our feelings about love and about her cousin these are also being talked about so the world is not just the world of the women it's the world of love as well romance as well and the world around lenny uh, whatever the people are appearing in that it is the world of godmother as well it is the world of the uh, of of shanta the aya as well it is the world of all her lovers as well for example uh, we can ignore this uh, this green area because it's not suitable to discuss here however it it is going to be the sign of lenny babies growing up into a young woman and uh, some of the passages more will be dedicated to that and in this way lenny will be shown to us to be growing in age in order to give us a touch of reality the writer has given the growth of lenny baby into from a young girl into a young woman and this is what is being repeated in the end of the chapter as well so that we may not lose the touch with the reality that so much time is passing why lenny is just a child of 7 year why is he not growing up so in that way some of the lines have been dedicated to the appearance of lenny and how she is converting into someone who is really uh, you know very important one so let us see more into the chapter into into some of the more chapters that we find there uh i i think a few moments we can spend because i have uh, lost the uh, passages which i wanted to show you people so uh, so therefore let me go back to chapter 27 before we can continue with our discussion here uh chapter 20 uh last chapter that we have been uh, doing in that way uh, it, it gave a lot of things to us people to understand what is going on and right now we are on chapter 27 also in chapter 27 for example we have a story and that story i don't want to read for you people stories have been quoted by the writer again and again by different writers for example chinwa chebe in his novel quotes the story of the tortoise and many other stories as well same is the case with uh the the writer uh, rohinton mystery he too in his short stories quotes some of the stories in order to strengthen his point of view and here again we have the story of uh, the tiger and the prince that story is told uh, by godmother and that story uh, may not be having a direct link with that but still it is the kind of uh, link that is suggested to see how a woman calls herself a fate smitten woman how a woman calls herself a woman who has been suffering how a woman calls herself a woman who has got nothing to control her life it is the other people who control their lives and that is why the story has been talked about let me briefly tell you people that this is the story about one prince uh, who was born after the long prayers of the king and the queen and uh, but the problem uh, with the uh, with the with the prince was that he could not uh, he, he was not able to survive because he was coming after so many prayers of the parents and the people but the condition was there that uh, the boy will be born however he would be eaten by a tiger when he would grow into 16 years of age so that is why the king and the queen made best efforts uh, efforts in order to save their son they would kill all the tigers around their kingdom and not only in their kingdom but the kingdoms around them and they would finish out together the tigers in such a way that uh, people forgot what the tiger was and what type of creature it was and how the tiger can be dangerous as well all these things were forgotten by the people because tigers had disappeared so that is why the king and the queen were very much satisfied but as soon as the prince grew into 16 years of age at that time the dream again came to the mind of the king that something is going to happen to the son and he will be eaten by the tiger so he became very much careful once again that he searched out for the tigers and finished all the tigers he was quite satisfied and happy and uh, one day he was very happy because he saw that the 16th years were passing and there was no mention of the tiger and tiger couldn't kill his son as well so he was very happy but all of a sudden the prince started to weep and cry and wail when he was looking at a picture of the tiger in the uh, in the roof of the palace where they were sitting in the darbar of the king they were sitting and there was a picture of the 
tiger and the uh, and the son started to feel that the same tiger who was in the picture will kill him and uh, he started to weep and cry and went unconscious and ultimately in his unconsciousness he died and the king could notice that the tiger in the picture had glowing eyes and the fierce looks and after some time the tiger became normal and the and the prince was dead so in that way whatever the cares were taken by the king in order to save his prince could not be done would not be of any benefit the prince was ultimately killed by the same tiger though the tiger was only in the picture but the prince died after 16 years of age this is what goes to prove that uh, at the hands of fate all of us are uh, you know quite helpless people and we may be having lots of trouble with ourselves we may be trying to save ourselves or we may be trying to gain the help of other people we may be inventing many machines and many powerful kind of structures as well in order to save ourselves and mostly it happens we cannot the present situation of uh, covid-19 is the direct example of this situation because the american word the uh, other words which were very popular in science and technology they had reached the height of science and technology but today we can see that their science and technology is unable to save them maximum number of people are dying there this possibly can be termed as fate in the same way as hamida terms that the women who are crying and wailing they are the women who are suffering women so in that way this is going to be the problem there and that problem is highlighted again through this story so telling the story within the story is another way of the writer to let us know what is going on and what is happening so i'm taking you down because this chapter has only this story which is important we are in chapter 28 now and uh, i shall be trying to see whether something is there in order to teach you people and let you know what is going on but i don't find any of the passages in chapter 28 this may be a chapter discussing the attitude of the cousin attitude of uh, lenny baby and attitude of god mother and again the attitude of slave sister and the husband of god mother all these things are talked about which are not that important for us so this chapter can be closed by thinking about the relationship of cousin and lenny as they are the young people teenagers so they try to raise the level of love between them it doesn't happen the writer has taken a chance to increase the romantic situation in the novel as well as she had done in case of i am the beginning the same thing she is trying to writer is trying to do in this chapter as well so let's talk about chapter 29 and in this chapter we have different descriptions definitely the paragraph of chapter 29 begins and then late one evening i too see aya it doesn't register at once it's only after the taxi has driven past slowing at the corner of mozang chowk and temple road that i realize that the flashy woman with the blazing lipsticks and chalky powder and a huge pink hibiscus in her hair and unseeing eyes and large like an actress with kohol and massacre and mascarard mascarard eyelashes sitting squashed between two thin words was aya Uh, in the evening i passed to hamida to take me to the queen's garden so in this way uh, aya once again has been brought into the story uh, that she is very much decorated very much happy very much uh, bright like she is appearing this is the change which is which has come into her and that makes the reader disturbed as well because when she was uh, abducted at that time her condition was not that good but when she is found out once again by lenny her condition is so good so beautiful what is the reason behind that why this change has come normally this change comes in the people who become actors and actresses or prostitutes the same thing is being hinted upon that how a simple girl like that can appear in this way so therefore chapter 29 is going to talk much about this aya but who will talk about aya what kind of discussion will take place in this case the ice candy man will become a very important person the ice candy man will definitely uh, come up as a person who will discuss lots lots of things about the way he has taken up uh, aya and he has married her he has rescued her and where she is at this moment so in this way many things will be talked about in this uh, part of the book Uh, you people can go through these passages which are green in color but the summary i can present to you out of this chapter by thinking uh, that what has in fact happened that aya was abducted raped and uh, you know exploited by number of people and ultimately it was ice candy man who rescued her married her and put her in the kotha of the hira mandi or the diamond market of lahore and there she was supposed to stay for a long time as a prostitute as a singer and he was the husband of that girl so in this way uh, this is the ultimate uh, gap stop arrangement which the 
which the writer has made in order to let us know that uh, Ice Candy Man was so much sad, so much upset about that, that he has done it. But he was thinking he has done out of the love of this woman, Aya. But Godmother says that he has destroyed Aya actually, and uh, in that way, he has done seriously bad things with Aya by putting her into the Hira Mandi, and that is something very bad. But but the Ice Candy Man does not agree with that. He says that he has done a rightful thing, he saved them. But in fact, in the eye of the Godmother, in the eye of the people, Ice Candy Man has become a type of pimp who is selling his wife, and uh, therefore, that's a kind of trouble which is there in the mind of Godmother. She is there to rescue now Aya out of the clutches of uh, all these people, and uh, a lot of things uh, are discussed by Ice Candy Man and Godmother. Godmother ultimately convinces Ice Candy Man that he should leave Aya or he should let uh, let them visit Aya and listen to her what she is going to say. So in that way, Chapter 29 is dedicated to the discussion between the Ice Candy Man and the conversion the Ice Candy Man has become. First of all, first of all, he was simply an Ice Candy Man trying his luck on different kind of professions, but right now he becomes a poet and a pimp. And in that way, he is trading his wife, Aya, and, and therefore she's rich also. She's having all these sources as well, but she's residing in the quarters of Lahore, which is called the diamond market. So therefore, that is the situation in which uh, uh, Ice Candy Man has come to see Godmother, and Godmother is the only person who can re rescue Aya from the clutches of uh, this man, Ice Candy Man, the clutches of other men who are the customers coming to the, the area, which is called as that diamond market. Um, Ice Candy Man's conversion is also of the same nature, that he has become in a way religious, in a way very polite poet, but in fact he's not. He is the person who's become the pimp as well. Some of the story will also discuss the way how Mughal courtiers arrange this type of thing, that uh, the beautiful girls were kept inside the houses, these kotas, where the prince and princesses would come and they would try to you know, reach the girls by paying them the money. And in that way, this profession has been told to be the oldest possible profession. And uh, therefore, an irony of situation, one can say is there that this irony of situation has compelled everybody to accept this profession where the women are to be respected as well. But the case is that women may be under the stress of partition, they may be under the stress of domestic violence, whatever the case may be. The ultimate sufferers are the women because their identities, because their uh, personalities are destroyed because of such situation which Aya is facing. Although in the eye of Ice Candy Man, she's safe, she's happy, but it's not the case at all. Ultimately, uh, Aya is uh, to receive Godmother as guest and Ice Candy Man is to uh, serve them as a guest and ultimately Lenny and everybody will go there in order to see how Aya is there and what type of situation she is in and all, everybody reaches there. After some time, the Ice Candy Man goes to bring the cups of tea for them and uh, God Mother therefore is able to talk to uh, this uh, Aya as well and Aya goes to reveal that she is not at all happy uh, with, the, with the whole uh, situation. Uh, this situation is up to some extent brought back to the house of Parsi people as well when Dr. Slazer is also talked about. Dr. Slazer is another doctor he's staying into the house of the six and is in front of uh, the house of uh, Lenny as well. We don't need to discuss Dr. Slazer at all. He's just a kind of person as a, as a minor character may be treated. But main thing we should focus on the discussion which takes place between Aya and uh, the godmother and the way godmother is able to rescue that I had sent her back to the Amritsar, the people who, who are uh, very good people of, of the family of Aya. So chapter 32 is uh, is to give us this type of situation in which Aya is ultimately, uh, you know, rescued and uh, she is put to the, to the kind of transformation where she should be able to go back to her home. So in that way, Aya goes with the help of uh, Godmother Aya goes back to, to her village and is able to, uh, you know, uh, able to get rid of Ice Candy Man. She didn't love him at all. She wanted to go back to his own people. And ultimately, one can say that Aya has gone back to her own village where from she had come. The partition had made her suffer without any reason. She was there at the house of these people in order to earn some money. And ultimately, the partition occurred. And because of this partition, she had suffered so much. And that suffering has caused her to uh, become a person who is violated, who is manipulated, who is exploited in a very bitter way. And that bitter way has resulted her 
condition that even a lover puts her into that situation where she is in the quota. She's in the quota and she's a dancing girl. She's not going to be the person having a respectable profession, a respectable family as she used to have. So that is why she has tried to retreat back to her own village. And ultimately, godmother is the person and the mom of Lenny is the person who all join hands in order to discover her, in order to recover her, in order to send her back to her own people. So in that way, the process of the losing of Aya, then the, the problem which occur and happen with Aya, and ultimately she is rescued and after that she is sent back. So this is the story of every woman who is coming from India as a migration, migratory process and who is to live there in Pakistan for some time. All these women who have suffered because of this partition thing, they have lost a number of things and after that some of the things have been recovered and after that some of the things have been given back to them but the total thing has never been given back to them and ultimately that is the type of situation and problem through which the women have to go so dear viewers and the students here we stop for this day in this way we have completed the whole text of ice candy man and uh, next time i shall be discussing various topics of ice candy man with the people in order to enlighten you the way the assignments should be prepared by people so that's it from me for this day hopefully seeing you in some other next video sometime thank you very much for watching all that my advice is that you may read all the colored passages at home and keep all those ideas in your mind which i have put forth before you and in that way it will be a better understanding how i has lost how recovered and how then she is sent back to india thank you very much and that's it from me for this day